Good morning, Panama. How are y'all doing today? My name is Austin Hess with Living La Vida Lockdown. I have a very special guest today. Oh my gosh, two-term mayor of Panama City, founder of the National Association for Conservation of Nature, an acronym that spells out ANCON in Spanish, the one and only Sir Juan Carlos Navarro. How are you today? I'm great, Austin, but without the sir, you make me sound old. <laughs> ah, come on, I'm a sir too. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you how are you holding up over there? Man, we're all hunkered down here for the for the coronavirus thing. And uh, we're working through it. I'm confident yeah. that we'll all come through and that Panama will come through, which is what we all want. But in the meantime, exercise, try to eat healthy, stay healthy, work, read. What can I tell you? And relax a little bit. You gotta admit, the relaxation, I know we're we're kind of active guys, but taking the time off and and being able to breathe for a minute has actually, I've been really enjoying it a lot, to be honest with you. Well, I, I'll tell you, my I don't have enough time in my day for everything that I want to do and to cram into it. I work in our solar company in N Solar with my oldest kid, Juan Andres, who yeah. has a company on our team. So I do it for several hours a day. And uh, I spend time with my family. I read a lot. I take care of my social media and boy, uh, my day's over, and I have a thousand things to do. Yeah, I see that you're quite busy on social media. Yeah, well, I try to keep up, but I never have enough time. You know how it is. Of course, of course, of course. There's, there could always be multiples of us. So tell me, you know, since we got you here today, I would love to know more. What was your inspiration? I mean, you know, being the founder of the National Association for Conservation of Nature, I mean, you have to have a really big love for nature and conservation. How did you get into that? What, what inspired you to you know, lead this life? Oh, it's uh, one of the most important things in my life since I was born. Uh, since we were little, my family would take me out to El Valle de Anton, where we would spend summers. And we would literally go to El Valle in December, spend Christmas there, New Year's, and come back to Panama the day before school started. But I was doing this since I was two months old, and uh, nature is a big deal in my family. So when I was very, very young, I was already out in nature in El Valle, swimming in the rivers every day, climbing every mountain in El Valle, and out in nature and look, watching, at, watching birds, looking at birds, looking at nature. And, uh, and then when we were young kids, uh, my parents got a, a big tent. Uh, they ordered it from the Sears catalog, if you can believe this. <laughs> and uh, my my father got a, a, an old uh, surplus U.S. Army Jeep that he bought from somebody here in Panama. And we have a little trailer behind. And off we would go. My, my mom, my dad, my brother Eduardo, my oldest brother, and myself, and our little dog, Paki. And we would go camping all over Panama. And uh, awesome. this is how I grew up, horseback riding. Again, swimming in rivers, climbing mountains. And then when, when, uh, when I was uh, finishing college and finishing my master's degree, uh, I was offered the, the opportunity by a group of uh, scientists and business people in Panama. They called me up and they said, hey, we're looking for somebody to run an environmental organization, to found it. Do you want to, to get involved? And I said, hell, yes, I'll do it immediately. As a matter of fact, Austin. I had been I admitted to an MBA program in INSEAD. Uh, it's a French business school because I already had a master's from the U.S. in okay. public sector management. Yeah, I saw and that. I figured it would help me round out skills. And uh, I applied to this school. It's a, a very important MBA in Europe in a place called Fontainebleau, not far from Paris. And I was admitted and everything. Uh, but in the meantime, I was asked to help to do this. I didn't even think about it. I just said, I'm doing this right away. Nature is hugely important for me. And so my wife and I, we came down to Panama and founded Ancon. That was the 15th of August, 1985. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, I mean, Panama, you know, for myself, I came to Panama and that was one of the reasons that attracted me to stay here. And then of course, 
starting businesses, meeting my wife, um, a lot of extra things now hold me into Panama and holds Panama dear to my heart. But the nature and just the diversity of the, how many different species of birds, you know, like in the Pearl Islands, you have that right before Contador, you have the bird island and you go out on the ferry and you're like, my goodness, there's this like thousands upon thousands of birds. And it's like, it's very important, as you said, to conserve this, you know, this is a very important element of Panama. Um, even the ATP um, or the Fundo Mixto, I don't know which one, but they came out with a video recently uh, about Discover Nature, um, which was really neat. It's beautiful. And it shows, you know, like that's a really big and, and important element of Panama is our nature. So I commend you on that. That's Thank amazing. you. Let me tell you, Panama is a biological diversity powerhouse. We're a world-class power in terms of our nature our biodiversity, our natural heritage. And uh, it's because we're a very small country with two very, very extensive coastlines in, in terms of relative to the size of the country. We're smaller than, uh, or about the same size as South Carolina. Uh, yeah, just to give you a incredible. comparison for people who come from the States. And in that very small country, we have more birds. We're talking about birds, over a thousand species we have more birds than the U.S. and Canada combined. But by like a, a long shot too, right? Yeah. And the, this is why we need to preserve our nature. And just a quick word on this. I'm very, very uh, worried and upset because currently the current government is permitting logging and transporting of logs. And we're talking here about uh, trees that are centuries old from Darien to be exported yeah. to China. This is a tragedy and a travesty. And I want to ask everyone who is watching us on their social media, please let your opinion be known and share your opinion so that the Ministry of Ambiente, um, at Mi Ambiente, knows yeah. your opinion and stop destroying our forests in the area. And please help me with this. Of course, of course, yeah, because I mean, just recently I, I've flown to Bocas many times and, you know, you fly over the jungle. Um, I've never flown over the Darien, but um, what was it about? Gosh, it's been so long. We've been in lockdown. It's, I guess, almost two months now. I flew over to San Blas um, to go on a little adventure. And I mentioned to my father, he was in the plane with me, man, look at these jungles. Like, it's just incredible. And, like, just to imagine the wildlife. I mean, here in, I live here in Albrook, you know, and like just to see all the difference. I saw two species of birds I've never seen before just yesterday. I got my son playing with rain bugs. Like the kid is, he's going to be like, I, when you said that you, you were like this since you were born. Like I look at my son and like, he says, dad, can I bring my friends in the house? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is so incredible. Like his love for nature already. And like, when you say that, I'm like, it kind of makes me even more proud that he has such a love for nature and, you know, he- Let me he tell you, I'll give you a little tip, Austin. Everybody who, anybody who sees birds that they like and that they don't know what they are, yeah. just uh, contact the Panama Audubon. Just look okay. on the web. They have a, a Twitter, they have Instagram, and they will tell you what species you are watching. Matter of fact, many uh, months ago, uh, Panama Audubon and Ancon, when we founded it, we published jointly the first guide to the birds of Panama in Spanish, which was a translation of the Robert S. Ridgely book. He was affiliated to the Philadelphia Academy of Sciences, of scientists, uh, of sciences, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Well-known US ornithologist, wrote the book literally on Panama's birds. He and another fellow who did it several decades earlier went more, but this was like the more popular version. And this Ridgely version, we published jointly in, Sp in Spanish for the first time some 30 years ago to let Panamanians know more about our birds, a joint program at that time. But That's uh, awesome. again, just uh, check it out with Panama Audubon online. Ask them about well, all I have to do is them photographs. If I take a picture, I can post it on their Instagram, just their put it on, your, on your social media and tag them and ask what the species is. And oh, that's really fact, cool. I had no people, idea. Oh, yeah, they're fantastic. I ask them all the time because I'm. I'm not a specialist. I've seen literally hundreds of species in Panama, but I'm not as a particular specialist. You know, there are over a thousand species. Yeah. And so I ask them all the time. And let me ask you, since we're talking about birds, 
Do you have a favorite bird in Panama? Well, I have several. I know. I was thinking that in my head right now. I'm like, oh, this one, this one. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about two or three of them. There's this fantastic bird in Bocas del Toro. And the, many years ago, among the several things we did in Ancon, we created, we helped to create several very important national parks. Uh, I, I ran the organization for 14 years after creating it. And basically, we ran a, a hell of a, an environmental education campaign with TV ads, you know, very aggressive to make Panamanians conscious of our natural heritage and the need to protect it. That was probably our, our most important uh, triumph and achievement to make people aware of our natural heritage and, and the need to protect it. Uh, but sure. the second most important thing we did was to strengthen existing national parks like Darien National Park, World Biosphere uh, Reserve, World Heritage Sites, and also to create new parks. Those new parks include parks like the uh, Corredor Biológico Serranía del Bagre, which connects to and adds to Darien the Amistad International Reserve in the highlands of Bocas del Toro and Chiriquí, which is a binational park with Costa Rica. The Coiba Biosphere Reserve, which protects okay. Panama's largest island, one of the largest in the Pacific continent, the Pacific side of the American continent. And also a small park that we created, several more, but these are just the ones that come to mind. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, when I finished my work at Ancon, I wrote the book on national parks. Panama National Parks that you can still pick it up at some stores. Anyway, I was trying to come to the little park that we created in Bocas. Okay. Bastimentos National Marine Park. And Beautiful. that small park protects a critical endangered sea turtle nesting grounds in Bastimentos and the Zapatillas Keys. And okay. also very important uh, kelp fields in uh, the, the mangrove and the Bay of Almirante, where turtles rest, breed, fatten up by eating all of this kelp and, uh, and algae. And so that's one of the, of the ones you spoke about, Bocas, one of my yep. favorite places, and where we did a lot of work, both Amistad and Bastimentos. And now there are also several other smaller reserves that uh, help to make it a very, very special place that will be protected into the future which is what we want for all of Panama. Of course, of course. And what bird in Bocas was the bird that you was one of your top three? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> uh, ran off with this story. Because I know. There's a bird in uh, Bocas del Toro that only occurs on, uh, it nests in uh, this big rock right next to Boca del Drago. Okay. And, uh, oh boy. I'm trying to think of the, the name right now and it, just now it escaped my mind, but I will come back to it. Uh, it's a, it has a very, very long tail and it's absolutely beautiful and you can only see it at this point. And, and this point in Panama, you cannot see it anywhere else. The name of the species will come back to me in one second. Uh, <laughs> and then a couple others. What about the harpy yes. eagle? Is that one of your favorite? Yes, and the other one, the harpy eagle, because it's our national bird. This of bird in, Boca, in Bocas del Toro that you can see in Bocas del Drago. I will try yeah. to find the name in a, my computer one second to see if I can find it and I will get back to you. But the other one is the Harpy Eagle, of course, because it's the national bird of Panama. And we have yeah. one of the biggest populations of Harpy Eagles in the world and uh, viable populations. And I've seen it in the wild in the Patino Nature Reserve, which is uh, in... Uh, the coast of the Gulf of San Miguel in Darien, a, a 30,000 hectare private reserve that was uh, bought and protected by Ancon several years ago and is still going strong, spectacular uh, a reserve. And the other one that I, that I love very much, the species, is just special to me. It's the uh, squirrel cuckoo. You can check it out also online. I have to check it bird, out. We call it in Espanol, el pájaro ardilla. Wait for one second and I'm going to see if I can. Well, if I find the bird, I will tell you in one second. It's, a, it's just a fantastic bird that you can only see out in Bocas. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. You know, and like you said, we have, I didn't know it was over a thousand. I thought it was 900, but I guess we have over a thousand species. 
you know, a couple of my favorite, obviously the Harpy Eagle, the Toucan is out of this world. But I love Toucans. And, uh, and we have that huge Toucan with a yellow uh, mandible, uh, which is also called El Toucan del Choco, or okay. uh, Yellow Mandible the Toucan, and which is bigger even that, than the normal uh, rainbow uh, yeah. beak that you see all the and time. How many, species, how many species of toucans do we have in Panama? Well, we have those two big ones, and then we have several toucanets. Okay. So a little smaller, but also fantastic. Yeah, I've seen a couple of, like, one was like burgundy and really pretty. I remember they're, that. They're spectacular. But just an amazing bird, amazing bird. So I want to talk more about birds, but I also, since we don't have a ton of time here, I would like to ask you, because I was reading your bio and something really struck me as just wow, is you were selected one of the planet's 100 best promising leaders by Time Magazine in 1994. How does that happen? What actions did they look at that got you on this amazing list in Time Magazine? Austin, I have no idea how that happened. They called me and they interviewed me. And then they, uh, I, I asked, what are you interviewing me for? And they said, no, we're putting together some articles, this and that. And then they called me back about a month later and they said, uh, you have been selected to be on this list because of your environmental work. And I was, of course, uh, flabbergasted, but also very excited because it was a, a fantastic uh, push to our environmental efforts. Um, how amazing, how, how super amazing is that? I mean, when I read that, I was like, wow, you know, I know, I know you were a two time mayor, uh, two term mayor of Panama city, which is huge. And what a great feat that is an ac accomplishment. Um, but, but then I, you know, what's what that? I did was first for 14 years, I did Ancon and dedicated my, my professional career, my first professional career to Ancon and to protecting nature. And then after those 14 years, uh, I, well, I basically wrote my book on national parks, got a grant for it from abroad, from the, from the MacArthur Foundation in Chicago, as a matter of fact. And then I uh, uh, went into politics and was able to uh, succeed in getting elected as mayor of Panama City and did that for 10 years, was reelected once uh, with, a, with a very strong support with 60% of the vote for re-election, which was, uh, uh, for me, a very humbling experience because it uh, gave me an enormous responsibility to do my job well. Well, I do the first of five years, and then I got an opportunity to do it again for five more. And I can say that we truly transformed Panama City during those 10 years. We cleaned it up, made it green, created nature reserves in the city like Cerro and Con, which is a municipal yeah. protected area in the middle, in the heart of the city. And uh, and also had a, a very strong social program to support uh, local schools, local school children, to support our population, to make sure that we had a safe population that, that we could live with the lowest possible crime rate, that, that uh, cleaning up the city again was very important for us. It was the first time the mayor took over responsibility for picking up our garbage and maintaining the, the, the city's streets in a clean manner. And this, of course, is very directly related to health. And the, the social program, the cleaning up of the city, the greening of the city in its entirety, when you add all of this up, it amounted to a, whew, a tremendous amount okay. of work. Ten we years did too. It with a fantastic team, and uh, and we had amazing support from citizens, and all of those guys did all the work, and I was there with them, and uh, I did it for ten years, and boy, I'm very proud of the work that citizens and our team uh, did at that time. And that actually takes me to my next question: What was your proudest achievement? You and your teams and the citizens' achievement. What did you see that was like? Something that you made a difference in that was your proudest moment in the in your politics. Undoubtedly, the transformation of the city. If you look at what we did during that time, during those ten years, Panama City became one of the most advanced capitals in the region. 
in terms of el, our social programs, the fact that we made sure that everybody had access to education. Education is always the central government's mandate, but we played a supporting role and we made sure through scholarships, school lunches, support for uh, books and studying materials for kids. We made sure that every kid in Panama was in school and had an opportunity to get an education. And at the same time we were doing that, we had tremendous economic development in the city. We had, for the 10 years that I was major, over a billion dollars in new construction per year in Panama City. And that transformed the city into the modern metropolis that we have now. We did that while guaranteeing that these economic activities created jobs for Panamanian citizens who were in the city who were coming out of school and who wanted to improve their lives. And also at the same time, to do that within a sustainable environment strategy by cleaning up the city and greening the city. And so it was an explosion. It totally turned Panama City around. And uh, that allowed us to build and to, to construct the basis of what you see today in Panama City, the modern, uh, teeming, thriving city that you see, that you see normally because of course right now we're all in, in a living la vida lockdown, I heard you say, that's pretty funny. Anyway, so that's what I did for a long time, uh, Austin. And the, let's see, that was, I did that for about uh, 10 years. For, I started, I was elected in 1999 and I, yep. I was re-elected in uh, 2004 and then I finished my second term in 2009. And uh, oof, just remembering it, I don't think that there's a, 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 a more difficult job in politics in Panama, not even the presidency. Yeah, it's because, incredible. Because being mayor gets you very, very close to people. And uh, back then we didn't have the internet, it was just being created. As a matter of fact, we also turned the administration of the city into the most modern and transparent ever in the history of public government in Panama. Wow. We, we created the first website for Panama City, there was none. We were the first institution on my mandate that published our entire payroll, had never been done before public payroll by no institution in Panama. We were the first, not only to publish our public payroll, to institute a system of public consultation to build our budget. I would go out to every community and I will also publish a report of our activities once a year that would be inserted in every newspaper and that would be published eventually in our website once we built it. Yep. I then would go out to every corregimiento in Panama and meet with every community and present personally my report and get input as to what people wanted for the next year. And all of that would go into our program and our budget for the following year. And we were also the first, and I think the only, the only time ever in our history that a Panamanian public agency or a government published every one of our checks, every payment we made to a separate party, I ordered that they were published in our website so that every Panamanian knew exactly what we spent, who got a check from us and for what. And yeah. it was, it was, we got a big award from uh, Transparency International, recognition from Transparency International in Panama that uh, pointed us out as one of the most transparent institutions in Panama when I finished my term. And by the way, we got a, uh, I got a prize from one of my, my uh, universities from uh, the Harvard John F. Kennedy School of Government as the, the alumni of the year for my work in the mayor's office. And I got a separate recognition from Panama University's School of uh, Public Service for being the public servant of the year also because of our work in uh, the mayor's office. But by the way, that was all possible if you promise not to tell anyone <laughs> the secret. I managed to do that because people helped us. The citizens were the one who did everything and yeah. the people on our team. And by listening to people, and doing what they wanted, 
publishing of everything, transparent, making sure that we consulted, we heard, we listened to what people wanted, to, and then worked with people in our governing program. That's how we got it done. And I got to, to receive some of the awards on behalf of my citizens, but I always pointed out that they were the real heroes. Of course, I love that. I love that because yeah, it takes a village. It definitely does. Now, Juan Carlos, I you know one of my my big things, you know, when we first met, I you know, and your 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 love for conservation, I could tell that, and obviously we were discussing uh, end solar um, when we when yes. we first had a discussion. Tell me, how did you get? Obviously, you love to do things that are uh, environmentally less impactful. How did you get into end solar? Let me tell you, I've always been in love with solar energy. I think it is so amazing that you can build something, a solar panel, that you just put it out there and it gives you cheap and free electricity, which is also clean. It's this awesome. is amazing. Yes. I've been in love with this since I was a young kid. As a matter of fact, when I, when I built this house in Casco Viejo, I was also a pioneer in Casco Viejo. I live here, uh, I've lived here for 25 years. My wife and I, when we were married, we, uh, uh, I bought this house. I convinced her that, Cookie, we need to live in Casco Viejo. So I convinced her that we had to move out here. Uh, and uh, she went along with it. as She's gone along with all the crazy things I've done in my life. And uh, then we uh, remodeled this place. And back then, I mentioned it because when we were remodeling our, the, the place back then that you could buy a house in El Casco Viejo for $20,000, if you can believe this. Awesome. Yeah. If you had the vision back then, which I had, uh, back then it cost more because I, I asked for a budget and, a, and, a, and a, I asked for a, for a proposal. Uh, uh, I found that there, that there was uh, this company in the US that installed solar systems in California. And it cost more back then to put solar on my house than to rebuild the entire house. And wow. so I couldn't do it. But I was already 30 years ago, 25 years ago, I was already yeah. out there trying to get solar energy in my house. And uh, then all of my life I've been, I've been trying to do something with solar. And finally, uh, after I finished in the mayor's office, I ran for president unsuccessfully. Else I think I would be doing this interview from a different place, <laughs> but I'm doing it from my home because I was not successful to, in getting enough votes to be president. But uh, what I did when, when I finished uh, my campaign the last time, I said, okay, I'm finally going to build my dream, which is to build a, a solar energy company in Panama. And I yeah. did, I started this company. I found these two engineers and you won't believe this. One of them, is a distant, very distant relative, but he's called Juan Carlos Navarro Bard is his second last name. Can you believe it that we have two Juan Carlos Navarro in the same company? <laughs> That's incredible. But anyway, this guy's amazing, just uh, absolutely smart and dedicated all of his life to renewable energy. And Alejandro Diaz is the other engineer. They were partners and I convinced them uh, to, to start this company with me. As a matter of fact, one of the things I did, Austin, you're gonna like this. One day I said, I've got to do this company. These are the right guys. I called them up and I said, do you have your passports? And they said like, what do you mean our passports? I said, I have plane reservations. I'm taking you to this event called Solar Power International. So I called them, picked them up in my Prios, the first Prios in Panama. I ordered it with Ricardo Perez. It took me three years to get it. But uh, wow. these are the sort of things that I've been doing all of my life. And anyway, course, so yes. I picked them up in my little Prius or Prius and uh, took them to the airport and took them to California and went to the international, uh, to the Solar Power International uh, meeting in Anaheim. And when we got there, there is like the, this, uh, the events hall in this place is. Uh, about uh, 10 football fields uh, under one roof. Everything inside Austin was solar energy. Everything, the latest solar panels, the latest batteries, the racks that you use to put them on your roof, 
the financing people of how you finance the entire thing. Uh, and in fact, well, just oh, what I wanted for them and also for me was to ha have something that would open our minds up to what solar power could be. And in Go fact, on. after doing that, we came back to Panama and eventually founded N Solar about six years ago. With a, and look at our mission statement for our company to lead a solar energy revolution so that clean energy reaches every Panamanian. I love it. I know it sounds more social than profit, but uh, we are we are we have managed to uh, make a profit finally after six years, and uh, awesome. we have installed uh, as of today over 10 megawatts of solar Ooh. energy in about 100 projects throughout Panama. Every and and it's, you, you do like uh, businesses and residential, correct? Oh, yeah. And by the way, anybody who's uh, watching what we're talking about can just go to our website, which is nsolar.net. And it's very complete. It has videos of um, a lot of the things we've done. And it has information. That, and I'll tell you, the success that we have had with solar because we're truly leading this revolution towards clean energy. And the success we have had is because we have focused on world-class technology and quality. We are the only company in Panama which has a, a certified engineers from NAPSET, the North American Board of Certified Energy Professionals. Uh, we're the only company in Panama that every system we install complies not only with Panama's rules and codes and regulations, but also with the U.S. Uh, National Electric Code, NEC 2020, the NEC 2020. So when I install a system in your place, uh, that system would is exactly equal to the one you would get in California or in Florida. Awesome. We're the only company in Panama that does this consistently with every one of the systems we install. And we focus on leading edge technology. We're the, the local leaders and experts, not only in Panama, but regionally in using micro inverters, which is a technology that we prefer. So I've done this with this amazing group of people. Now my son Juan Andres runs the company. Again, you can check it out in nsolar.net. And to all of those people who are in lockdown, like yourself, Austin, and I know we're already talking about this, but just so people know, uh, wouldn't it be fantastic to be at home paying zero electricity every month? Zero. Sure. I installed a, a solar energy system in my house in Punta Barco in the beach seven years ago. Guess how much I've paid in the seven year period in electricity? How much did you make? Zero. Zero. Now, and that takes me. I used to pay over $300 a month. Yeah. And That's for where seven about. years, I've paid zero dollars a month. And also, I'm contributing to the planet and to combat global warming with clean energy because the most important thing we can do to combat global warming is to protect our biodiversity, our forest, our nature, and yep. to use clean energy. So anybody who's watching, you want to do something for the planet? Here's your chance. Install solar energy. You want, some, you want a system that works, guaranteed, world-class quality, world-class technology, global standards, and solar is your company. That's what we do. And we try to do it better than anybody else. And we try to help everybody else that we can also. I also founded and started a Panama's a Social Energy Association, La Camara Panameña de Energia Solar, and was its first president, to promote solar energy and to promote other companies so that uh, other people are doing this also. And there are a bunch of other people doing it. And uh, uh, I hope that we turn this into a solar revolution very soon. No, I got to ask you, uh, something that you mentioned to me one time, and correct me if I'm wrong, but with your uh, majority of your systems, you're not charging batteries. You're actually going into the grid. Is that correct? Exactly. What we do is that we normally work with what is called a net meter. In, in Espanol, un medidor bidireccional. What we do is that we install that system on your rooftop, we love to use rooftop because rooftop doesn't use land. It's, it utilizes the panels, uh, yeah. something that was already built. So you don't affect, you have no footprint. It, the, the opposite from having a footprint on the land, 
you're using and getting more from something that was already uh, there and that had already a footprint on the land. And also, when you put the, the panels on your roof, your house gets cooler right away because wow. the heat stays in the solar panel. And also, you generate, of course, your cleaner energy. What we do is that we install that system with a net meter using Panama's net meter in law. We do everything. We do the plans. Our engineers are registered and, and have all the appropriate permits to sign the plans. We do all the permitting. We do all the installation. We do all of the paperwork with the electric company so that when everything's ready, they replace your current meter with a net meter, which means that all of the energy that you produce on your rooftop that you don't use immediately, all of that energy goes into the grid and you get a credit. For instance, I'm here talking to you right now. In my, in my little house in Punta Barco, my solar system is going not right now with the, the current sun. And so I'm generating a ton of energy and I'm not using it because I'm not there. So I, I only have the fridge, the pool, whatever. And right now what's happening? I'm getting a huge credit with the net meter during the day. At night, of course, I'm not generating anything and the lights that are on, the uh, fridge, Use whatever is on, I'm, I then get a bill. My net meter then, is charging me for the energy I'm using. But during the day, I'm always putting energy back into the grid. And so this is most of the systems we have installed. We have does, the grid, for, does the grid ever pay you? Oh, yeah. In January, they ask what? me if, yeah, they ask you if you want to keep your credit or if you want a check. And the electric <laughs> company pays you. Oh, I love it. I love it. For the excess energy that you generate. And I'm telling you, there's no better feeling in the world than getting a check from the electric company. Man, I'm telling you, I'm just a, it makes me so happy to be able That's to awesome. do this and, and to be able to do this for my customers. You know, these people, they call me every year in January and they just, they're just going like, whoa, I want Carlos. I can't believe it. I got another check from these guys. And then I'm not going to use the, the uh, expletives or the adjectives that they use to describe the electric company. But a lot of people love going the, this route with solar, doing something for the planet and never again having to pay money for to, to the electric company. And so that's what we help people do. So again, well, solar.net, just go right there. But we also do batteries, Austin. We have okay. a guy right now, uh, uh, this is a young young gentleman, uh, Pana Gringo, uh, from an old uh, Canal Zone Panamanian family uh, out in uh, Asuero. And he okay. just installed a system. I won't go into the particulars, but he just installed this fantastic system in his property. Out there, the electric service is terrible. Out there and in a lot of other places too, but out there particularly. And the light goes, the, the, the power goes out frequently. And so okay. he said, I'm fed up with this one, Carlos. And, and we have an electric power plant, but I have young kids, young, young children in the house. And every time the power goes off, the electric plant goes on and it wakes up the kids. It's a, can you help us? So we designed for him a system, solar panels, clean energy, batteries, backup batteries. And we kept his power plant as a backup for the batteries. And what happens now is that every time the power goes out, the, the power from the grid goes out, and, uh, and he also has a net meter. Okay, so power, yeah, you can do battery charge, and then once your batteries are charged, it goes to your net meter. Exactly. And what? when the power goes out, That's incredible. nothing happens. He keeps power in his house without noise because the power plant doesn't go on. The batteries take care of it, and they That's take care of the air conditioning in his, in his room, his kid's room. The lights of the house, the refrigerator, blah blah, the entire thing. And of course, should you have four or five days in a row with rain without sun, and the battery goes down below a certain level, then the power plant kicks in, charges the battery, and we start all over again. But so we do the works. We do the batteries, we do the, the net meter, we do the combination of all of the above, and we take care of your clean energy needs. And we do it with a passion that I guarantee you is unequal in Panama, probably unequal in many places around the world. <laughs> yeah, you do have a great energy. So if I love uh, what I do, Austin, like you, you love what you do. You, 
and and it shines it's, it shines through it shows through thank you so much and if some of our viewers out there are interested in knowing more about solar getting a, a quote i mean is it easy to get a quote for solar panels and systems oh, very easy all you have to do is follow the instructions in our website but you can also just call us or all you have to do is to send us your last electric bill and you need to send us also uh, a google earth image of your roof and with that we can send you a, 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 yeah and we send you a preliminary uh, budget of what it would cost to take your your electric bill down to zero which is what i love that's what <laughs> i love after we install this this is complicated every system is designed separately differently custom made so we design specifically for your roof and uh, we have a structural engineer who looks at your uh, structure and tells us if we need to reinforce it. We have another roof expert that tells us if we need to, to uh, fix the roof and make sure that it's in perfect shape before we put on the panels. And then our guys come in, the specialists, our engineers, and then they, with our, with our installing crew, they make sure that we uh, get everything on just right with our standards. All of our guys who go on your roof uh, use the high security standards. They've all been trained and every year get refreshing uh, training. Uh, our engineers go every year to the International Solar Power International, where they participate in seminars and training. In fact, when we get on your roof, you are getting quality and you're getting our best effort and all our passion. And the, from a preliminary proposal, we go very quickly to a final proposal, an on-site inspection, and then just give us your roof, man. And of course, you, all, all you have to do, Austin, is sign the checks. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, I guess. And, oh, and you also have to sign the plans because we have these big blueprints that we need to take all over the place to do the permitting. And you sign that and you send the transfer uh, funds. That's and you it. guys do all of that. Yeah. A to Z. Yep. All right. And well, I way, guess you make it too also, easy. We, we, we go, we're, we stand by you after the system is in place to make sure that you're happy and that you get your money's worth. Yes, I love it, I love it. Well, guys, if you're listening out there and you've been thinking about going solar, Juan Carlos and solar, they're your people, as you can see, highly, highly qualified. And I mean, I didn't know that you could do all that. I mean, this is incredible. It's such a great element on the conversation. Um, well, I didn't I, know we were going to talk about solar so much. I thought that that uh, you you would touch more upon politics and other stuff. It's refreshing for me. When I go to do an interview in Panama, I end up talking about politics. I'm more like, come yeah, on, man. I'm what the good times guy. Yeah. I'm good times, so. though. No, I, I know I'm politics is great. About politics too. I love politics I too. But I'm passionate about other things. And by the way, you want to learn more about what I do or get in contact with me? It's very simple. Uh, people who are watching, you just have to go into my website, juancarlosnavarro.com. Yeah, and we're going to post that in the text. As soon as we get done with this live, we're going to post that in the text of the post. Also, we're going to post and Solar's website. And just, again, try to help people get more uh, aware and be more conservative. Keep our, our waterways clean. Do what they can to keep the air clean. Go with renewable energies. I mean, you to to be able to 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 not only charge your batteries, then to also go into the grid and get credits. Like this is a no-brainer. Well, like I have more. I have an electric car. <laughs> what kind of car? For gas. I pay zero for gas. What do you have? Do you have a Tesla? I bought secondhand, but still perfect shape. A BMW i3 uh, that I share with my wife, uh, that translated, I have to beg to get to use it, but it works wonderfully. It's a, there are many electric cars now on the market and more coming on of all prices. I got mine in a really good deal because it was secondhand. It had been used previously by another owner in Panama. BMW has a fantastic shop in Panama. And so I don't pay for gas anymore either. And eventually, a lot of our customers are going to have that. The solar panels, the batteries, the electric car, and you're going to have clean energy. You're going to be helping the planet. And at the same time, you're going to be saving a bunch of money. And by the way, we didn't talk about this at the beginning of the program, but if we want to get serious about pandemics, 
we need to stop destroying nature. Yeah, of because course. The the way that you this see it right now, nature is out there. Like like I said, I saw two species of birds yesterday I've never seen before, and that's because also, they're coming out. And the the fact is that when we destroy nature, we we are species for the first time gets in contact with species, and in this case, a virus that we had never been in contact with before. And that's why we don't have any defenses against it. And it's proven scientifically that when we destroy nature, we significantly increase the odds of a pandemic. And something like what's happening right now with a with a COVID-19, the new coronavirus. So yeah. you want to make sure this doesn't happen again. Help us protect nature, guys. Hey, and remember, help me. Help me by writing uh, arroba mi ambiente, at mi ambiente. To make sure these guys stop destroying the end. For heaven's sakes, we're in the middle of a pandemic. They're still logging right now. How could this happen? Let's use our heads, guys. Stop this right now. And anybody who's watching this, please help me stop the destruction of the end by writing me ambiente or writing me at juancarlosnavarro.com and, and helping us to make sure that we don't destroy what's around us. Of course. No. Yeah, and we have such a beautiful, a beautiful jungle, beautiful. I mean, one of the, the reasons I stayed in Panama, I came here on accident on vacation on the tails, coattails of a friend. And I stayed here because I went to Bocas, I went to San Blas, I went to the province and I was just blown away. Like these places are so close to each other and they're so diverse and it's so much wildlife. And, you know, like when I went to the province, I was the first time I saw whales, like what? Like, and then you go over to Bocas del Toro where you saw monkeys and sloths. And I was just like, Wow, that was one of my biggest attractions. Okay, Austin, I have a deal for you. I just thought of this. I don't know if it just works this way, but I would like to invite you to Darien. With, okay. Perhaps we can do this together. Maybe we can we can somehow open up a contest or something to benefit some worthy cause. Yes. And, uh, and maybe raffle a couple of positions or seats to take a couple of people from uh, Panama Good Times with you and with us to that end. I love call? it. And I, I will love show it. you and your guests my that end. And you know what, Juan Carlos, you know, being being a, a tourism advocate and having newspapers and magazines and the app, I've been everywhere, but I have not been to the Darien. So I would Sir, love you will to go, go to the Darien. Darien. All right, I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's do it. We'll talk more about that, and we'll get the we'll get some type of uh, contest put together, and we can get that on the social medias and get people excited about conservation and taking care of our planet, especially, of course, taking care of our Panama. Um, this is our country, and this is uh, this is our home. And you know, once this is all over, you know, as you know myself, I'm really big into tourism. I have massive beliefs that, like, once we come out of this lockdown. We're going to have a lot of Panamanians, a lot of wealthier Panamanians that typically would be in Europe right now or be in the United States, you know, that they do every year that I don't know if the airlines are going to start back up right away after the lockdown. So I think that Panamanians are going to be able to have the opportunity to rediscover how great this country is. Like, you know, you have a gringo like me. I've been here eight years and I don't get bored. Like I go out and I see something more pretty and new every time. You know, I've been to the Pearl Islands over 500 times, and it's like, I love it. It's just in Boquete and Bocas del Toro and San Blas and Boca Chica. And, I mean, there's just so many beautiful areas, and I hope everyone gets to go out and rediscover Panama. You know, like we've been sitting in our houses for over a month now. Austin, you know that uh, one of the, the amazing things about this uh, uh, lockdown is that it has allowed us to focus in ourselves, our families, our country, the things we value, uh, our religion, our beliefs. And uh, I'm, I'm very worried right now for my country because uh, obviously until we're out of this, we, we cannot be free. And so I'm very worried. I'm hoping that, that all of the medical stuff keeps going well the lockdown, yep. all of the medical supplies, the equipment, the hospital, the new hospital that was built so quickly and so forth. I'm hoping that everybody has food on the table. This worries me a lot. Of course. You cannot be in lockdown if you don't have food. The government must find a way to put food on the table of every Panamanian. 
And the way to do that is to deposit cash on every Panamanian's cedula. Yeah. Because we cannot take out a bag of food to 4 million people. We have to do it by putting it on your cedula. And we well, do it I, I, I think I read that they were testing that and they had 100% success. That's ready to go. That yeah, was started in, that was that was first done 20 years ago with our cellulas. They have been ah. they have been ready for that for years. So this is the moment. And the third thing yeah. for me is security. I'm worried that we all can remain secure, all of us. Of course. We have no disturbances during this period. So God willing, everything will be fine, and then we can go back to building a better country, a sustainable country, a country where we where we respect nature and where we open the doors uh, uh, of possibility to every Panamanian according to his effort and his ability. Anyway, oh, I pray for this. And to our and to welcome our visitors and our and all oh, the yeah. tourists that come here to a beautiful and loving place because again like being an expat now eight years in Panama I'm always overly blown away by the beauty of this country and now seeing the people like I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, I'm seeing people working together, helping each other. It's just really beautiful. We have a great Panamanian culture here that also is complemented and accepted by many expats. Not all expats, but a lot of us really love the way Panama does things. And that's why we live here. You know, that's a big Let deal me for me. You, Austin, when people talk about tourism, the first thing you need to do if you want to develop tourism is develop the country. Of course. If Panamanians are happy, if Panamanians have an opportunity to excel, if every Panamanian has an opportunity to study, to be a professional, to to have a, a dignified life with his family, to have safety, to have a future, if if our country is clean and green, if our country is safe, if Panamanians are happy, that is the Panama that people will want to come ab from abroad to see. So 100%. we need to develop our country to make sure that everybody here has a chance, that everybody here has an opportunity, that there is fair play, that we have well, a legal speaking system. Of, speaking of, I don't know if you heard, but we have the Panama Good Times app. And speaking of being fair and, you know, of course, I, I need to make money as well as a business. Um, but my high, my love for this country is the people, is the businesses, is when businesses succeed. So we've actually just opened up. I didn't know if you know this. And we got to get your solar business on the app right away so people can start interacting with you there. But we're giving every business, every tour guide, every Panamanian tour guide, even Panamanians with experiences, like maybe a, a inspiring photographer that wants to take pictures of tourists and the most beautiful places in Casco Viejo, a salsa dance teacher. Uh, maybe you know how to make the best empanadas. So we're allowing businesses, guides, and these experiences to put a free, a gifted, a gifted listing on the Panama Good Times app for one year. Did Just you say free? Free. Free. I'm in. I'm in today. I'm filling this up today. This so, is the word I wanted to hear, Austin. Free. I love free. Again, we got to we got to do this together. You know, I we you know, typically we charge $100 a year, which is not a huge amount of money, but still as a lot of businesses are struggling, and I want to also not only do it for the people that are struggling, but for those Panamanians that maybe thought about, "Hey, my dream was always to be a guide or my dream was always to do these kayaking tours." And now your job maybe is not as secure as it was. And now here's an opportunity. If you're going to take people on a hike, all you got to do, I'm, I'm giving you the, the, the ability to list yourself here at no cost. Take it. Take the opportunity. Start this new uh, hiking business, adventures, um, whatever the business is. You know, like, again, this is what, what, why we added the experiences on is to give people that are not even established in the industry yet the opportunity to say, hey, man, I, I, I have, I, you know, I've been, I love birds. Austin, that's and, fantastic. And and anything I can do to help you with this, that's a fantastic opportunity that you're going to give to, to everybody who will be on the app once the things start getting back to normal. And even before, because I'm sure there will be businesses there that can do home delivery and that can start working on stuff with people. So thank you so much for what you do and your enthusiasm. You for making sure that, that people know about our fantastic country. 
Well, that's what we are. We're Panama, man. We are good times. That's that's what we're about. <laughs> well, thank you, Juan Carlos. I appreciate you so much and what you've done for this country. I'm so glad that I was able to and the viewers were able to learn a little bit more about why you do what you do and the background of you. And we appreciate you coming on the show today. And uh, I wish you and your family the most health and security through these trying times. And yeah, let's uh, get your business information over because yeah, we're taking this time to actually set up the app because it's slow. Let's let's work on getting things set up for the 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 outcome. Um, and I, I just want to thank you again for coming on the show. It's been a real honor. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay healthy. Awesome, my friend. Have a good one, guys. This has been Austin Hess with Juan Carlos Navarro, cool. Living La Vida Lockdown. We'll see you here again tomorrow at 11 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. Until then, ciao. Ciao.